Welcome guys to a new game, the Stanley Parable, a game, a game made by um, a guy called David Reason. Now, this used to be a free Half-Life mod back in 2011, but it ended up getting remade and uh, like a standalone version in 2013, I think. Uh, so I was going to play another game before I played this one. It was called The Beginner's Guide, uh, as it was suggested to me on the Discord channel. And it was made by the same guy. Um, but after reading about The Beginner's Guide, it said it was actually a follow-up follow uh, to this game. So I thought, well, why not play this game first? So I know nothing about this game, guys. It's a complete blind. I haven't even looked at what it's about. So uh, I think we just try it out. Have a little go. It's only about an hour and a half long. So it's a winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's begin the game. And uh, yeah, let's do this. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. Why? And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Wow, what a soul-destroying job. And then job. one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so we got control. Wow, what an unfulfilling job. Pressing buttons as they come in. And that's it. But he enjoys it. So yeah, so where is everyone? So let's find out where everyone is. So. We are for employee number 427, I think it said, yes. 427. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So the meeting, we've got to go to the meeting room. It's 25 past 11 in the morning, so... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I love that mug. Who farted? <laughs> Random. And that, look at that pencil sharpener. There's electronic gadgets. All right, okay, there's no one around here. We're going to go to the meeting room. I don't know if we can go with any of these doors or not. Or oh, smash any glass? No. Okay, let's find out what's going on. Where's the meeting room then? Like I said, I said I don't know anything about this game, so it's it's quite it's quite sort of nice when you do things like that. Right, Stanley we went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make <laughs> a single difference nor did it advance the story in any way. Oh, I like that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> I do like these narrative sort of games, narration games. I got I got really into them. Another, I hate Mondays. Yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? Right, let's keep going then. Um, I don't think we can get around to there because there was like a door open on the other side there. Number 425. So I wonder if we can get to 45. Let's say try every single door, but we've got to get to a meeting room. What is happening? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Did we? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I wonder how many people have done that. Go on the right hand side. So we can actually make choices then, I guess, in some sort of way. But we know we're in the, this is the employer's lounge here. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. 
<laughs> it had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Wow, what a room, eh? Right, let's keep going but now. eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. On his left? Not right. Well, we can keep we can keep going. Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> oh, brilliant! So we we can't go back now. That is it. We've 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 made our mind up. Should we be going the wrong way? I mean, wow. Wonder what happens if we think of the correct, the correct way. I like the way it's sort of uh, narrating it as well. So, what, can we go down here? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. <laughs> I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Who's been waiting? Is it our wife? Our girlfriend, our mummy. Oh, that's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. What happens if we don't pick up the phone? I just want to hear the narration, the narrator, tell us off. Does he tell us off? I pick up the damn phone. Nah. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> Gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Yes, please. I'm intrigued. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee 47. Press Z on your keyboard. Sure. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told okay, to do. Okay, I'm going to do something different. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I'm going to press four. No, I can't. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Press V to what? So what was I press a different button? It doesn't. It doesn't register. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building, had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Mm. Spend time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, 
choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Press X to prepare the... So, I'm just... I guess we got to press... As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Press Q to tell your kids, kids a story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Press 4 to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Well, I'm going to do it. Press one. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Press G to question. I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... What? Are we, are we dead? So it's 20 past 11 again. We're back here. Are we back? We're not back. Have we started? Are we actually dead? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Right, okay. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, looks like we have started again. Um, so, let's skip to the doors. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So, we'll try the left door this time. <laughs> Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, boss's room. Um, how to solve a dispute with a worker. Resent. Oh, okay. It's going through the slides quite quickly here. To do. Synergize call value expenditures. All right. So let's... Um, we don't know what's actually going on, do we? Okay. Let's go to the boss's office. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Oh, the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. <laughs> I like the way they're trying to push you to do stuff. Did he say upstairs? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can't help it. I can't help it, guys. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, 
Why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? It's a game. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Wow. <laughs> and while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. No, we're still here. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? <laughs> This is messing with my head. woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. 
and in that moment she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay, I'm just trying to process what's actually happening here. Oh my god, we're back here again. 20 past 11. Okay, well, let's, give, let's try to do the, I guess, different paths then. Someone was following Stanley. He was sure of it. If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely catch them. It was only a matter of time. This, what, end? The end is never the end. Okay, this is different. Okay, this is quite confusing. <laughs> it's as things changed. Has things changed? That's what we need to look for. These weren't this bright before, were they? I'm going to have to keep looking over my shoulder now as well. Uh, I thought there was blood down there. We opened this door. Hmm. Uh, it's a bit creepy, <laughs> to be honest. I feel a bit uncomfortable, but a bit uneasy, I feel. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, let's go and see our boss and see what happens with that. Um, it's just, it's nearly 11.25. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, well, we'll leave the broom covered alone. to a staircase, time. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So I wonder you just keep doing it until you do every kind of outcome. Oh, this is a nice office. Executive bathroom, which we can't go into. Right, that must be his office behind. Um, his secretary, or her secretary, is not here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two eight four five but of course stanley yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad oh. stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck amazing he stepped into the newly opened passageway hmm i don't know i don't know what to think about this game it's just a very unique game never played anything like it I'm kind of, I, I'm really liking this so far because I just want to know what's going on. What is, what is, what is the, what is the deal with Stanley? And where is everyone gone? And is it a dream? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Well, that is, oh, 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 shall we go the escape? Um, let's go to the escape for, oh. That's what we've got to do this passageway had the word escape written on it. 
The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Well, let's let's try it. <laughs> it. We might not meet our death. It might just be a warning. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Well, we'll keep going. I expect we'll go straight. We probably will die. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. I don't think it can be deaf. Could it be deaf? Yes, it's deaf. <laughs> uh, we're not. We're not dead. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Yeah, we can be crushed to pieces. Yeah, we're dead. Oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh! Wow. Not quite. Apologies for the darkness, guys. I might have to turn up the uh, brightness. Is that it? We, we made it? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Nature paintings. Oh, hang on. This is a plant. Stand this computer. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path to stand this office to the doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layer. It remains almost identical to the first iteration. Right, okay, this is where we walk. That's our office there, I think. And then we walked up here, walked down here. And then we have a choice between the left door and the right door here. Okay, so I guess we, we start again. Button sounds. The selection of sounds throughout the game was... We go through an office door. Okay, looks like we're starting again, guys. I don't know, we probably just failed it. Did we? Or did we? Was this part of the game? I don't know what's going on. Maintenance room. Uh, 431 to 436. War zone? What? Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up in a battlefield fighting aliens. Maybe we shouldn't read this. The action game would become... Uh, Sen sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We shortly, we realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. I don't know whether I should read this. It was almost like telling me the the flow of the hallway for the first. Right, I want to get back to the start then. I don't know whether this is this is this is all. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. 
But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Right, okay, we're back uh, in the office. Um, I had to start the game again. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Well, I'll, get, I'll keep going to the end and I'll, I'll do exactly what they say if I go into the boss's office. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, we'll do that. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, we'll do the exactly to that. a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. And we will go to the actual office this time. Oh no, we got to the number first. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. To Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just <laughs> let the narrator talk. That Brilliant. kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Wow, I love it the way things do change. Ah, oh, I feel calm, relaxed. Okay, can we... Feeling soothed <laughs> and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay, this was the same, wasn't it? Was this the same? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so we won't go to the escape. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Which is what we'll do this time. Okay, we press the button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, let's find out. I, I have no idea what's going on yet. To be honest, guys, this is a bit, a bit weird. What, the camera? I guess, we, I guess we press the camera button. Now the monitors Whoa. jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, wow. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. So what's it saying? Are they saying that we're all just... We are all just a number. Where's 40... Mm, let's get going. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, 
He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Well, everyone's off offline so far. Oh, you press that big red button. <laughs> is that in fact is that a red button? Mind control waiting input something. This is weird. This is a game not weird. I just because I don't understand it. So we got to turn something. Is there a big button we can? What's this? Console disabled. Okay, there's a room in there we can go to. Okay, let's let's go to the facility power. Mind controls idle awaiting input. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. So press on. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh, right. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? <laughs> yes. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds <laughs> left. But I'm enjoying this so much. That's you know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why 27 not? minutes. One more. Wow. These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. 
Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Yeah. Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These maybe we should buttons. do that. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be Why? beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment <laughs> that you're powerless. Well, what's this to room here? You made oh. humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world. That's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. So my, will you well, cling desperately Goodbye, employee 47. Life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Hello, we're back. Uh, let's keep going and make a different All of choice. his co-workers were gone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, <laughs> hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. I love the fact, because I just, I was trying to, trying to find or explore all the different endings. So I was going to go back to that button and press the, um, the, uh, the off button. But it's, so I basically just was trying to smash for the game and then, oh, it's brilliant. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over off. another human life. and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Okay. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Achievement unlocked. Beat the game. All right. So we only beat the game because we did exactly as the, the, the narrator wanted us to do. Uh, so by going opposite to the choices, but we do we well by going the opposite choices, we do end up open up 
different endings. So I want to explore some of the other endings. So I want to see our fictitious wife um, and see if I can change the ending there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Right, so we're basically at this point here now. Um, I'm going to carry on and see the wife first, or not, or the, the pretend wife. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Let's wait and not pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, <laughs> did you just unplug the yeah, phone? Yeah, I did. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. <laughs> this is quite good. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instruction. Oh my video. god. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> oh, God. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome ah. back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. It's like a it's like a game about 
choices in a game. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Okay. I guess... We'll go. Yeah, I just thought... Like, I was waiting for ages back answering the phone and it wasn't turning off, so I just thought, unplug it. <laughs> okay. Didn't we go... Oh, we're going back. Okay, we're going back then, so I guess... Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Okay. So... I do want to go back there at some point when we restart um, to talk to the mannequin. Well, not talk to the mannequin, but we could have uh, chosen not to die, which was another outcome. But I can't remember what we got to do differently on this one. Oh yeah, we can go now up to the... Almost there. You'll take the door on the left. Back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Right, okay, so now when we have a choice again, when we come out here... Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open <laughs> doors... He entered the door on his left. Well, I mean, I gotta do this one again, don't I? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Wow, look at all this. What's happened here? Can we... Okay, it's it's like buggered his programming up. That's what it has. It's buggered its programming up. Which is why it's all gone a bit crazy. Can't compute. All right, so we have to go the other, the other way then. Yeah, look at that. It's all gone. It's all corrupted. <laughs> so I guess we have to. Is there any other way we can go here? Can we go back this way? Okay, we'll have to go through here then. I think, I think we've done all the outcomes of this. Oh, oh dear. Ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story. You've destroyed my work. <laughs> Why? For what? What did you get out of that? We what did you out. think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Yeah, we, we broke the game. No, well, we didn't break the game. That was obviously in the game, but... It's simulating what we would do if we did break a game by... Choosing a choice which wasn't accounted for. Oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. <laughs> now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was Sorry. the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. Sorry. What, did you think that would be funny? You yeah. just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. 
That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Right. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So is it back to where as it was before? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, Okay, hurry. I'm not sure... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Almost feels like the game's bugged out. Ah, it's fixed. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, oh. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So they've closed off now choices in the game. So I can't possibly go wrong. Not strange, not good. Very clever. It's almost like a programmer's perspective of a game or choices. I don't know. Or the interaction between player and game. I don't, I don't know. Oh. Okay. So Stepping all... inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. Clever, and beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. No, nothing's working here. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Yeah, I'm trying to, but... I, I, it's not allowing me. Sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Um, it's not working. Let's just use my own voice. Was it? Was it? Okay, not fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Is this like bugged out now? Like I shouldn't be Stanley? here. Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stay no, please. the program's... I, program's buggered... Oh, the end! I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening Thank you for playing me? the Stanley Parable. Can you hear me? Is everything all right? I can't be the end, can Stanley, it? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. Right. It cannot exist without you. What I'm going to do, guys... Me? Whatever choice I'm you gonna... make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. <laughs> right, I'm going to carry on Choose. and find some more outcomes, guys, I think. Do something. Anything. The story this needs it. more them. important than you can ever know. I need, need this. this. The story needs it. Right. So, you hear me? Are you there? Let's find you some other endings. Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right.
Go a different way. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go um uh, uh, from here. It's um left. Oh no, no, it's to the right. My mistake. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story <laughs> is absolutely, brilliant, brilliant. definitely this way. Not this way. Okay, so that's the only way we can go. Did we go this way before? We haven't been here, have we? No. Okay, completely new, completely new route. No, ah. no, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to um. Oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley... Wait. Wait. What? <laughs> what? No. I'm... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? <laughs> Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with no? all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or... Uh... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find Whoa. the story. Whoa, how many doors? How, how many doors? Well, let's go this way, then. Let's go this way. It's a big maze. All right, okay. This is crazy. Um, it's... We go in this door here? How many endings are there of this game? <laughs> oh, my God. Completely lost. Completely bloody lost. Oh, hello. What's this? I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Okay. Why not? All right, we're back. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Right, is this going to be... Oh, there's no door at all this time. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Oh, there's a door open now. Or was that the door we came through? No, all this is all the same. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. So should we just go back or should we go No, wait, never mind. Not the story. 
Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is this is crazy, all the different outcomes they've done. Okay, this is different. <laughs> now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognise this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Yeah, well... Mm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Okay, and now we've actually got All right markers. I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Oh! Well, this is new. We didn't go over this door before. This was already... We couldn't get... Okay. Let's find... Let's follow the Stanley... See? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? <laughs> or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music yes. to lighten the mood. The music. Oh, this is this game is so original. <laughs> Peer reviews. Cut the music, go back, <laughs> and look at that fern. Oh yeah, very nice. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Okay, it's, it's, it's just a fern. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? What? Back at the start? Oh, we're back here um, again. No, no, <laughs> no, no, not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. <laughs> oh, we're back here again. Okay. So I wonder if this is going to be like you different... You know what, Stanley? Uh, I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Oh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in... Well, I don't know. How about this direction? Sure. Sure. Let's go this direction for a change. Wow, I just can't now, believe how many yes, different how many this entities is there are. exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Um, well, we have a little problem here. Oh. Okay. This is it's a bit, bit of a brain trickery. Oh, no, not you again. <laughs> Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. 
No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. And we should be fine. What's this? Like, ignore, just ignore it. Just ignore this painted, badly painted line. Oh, yeah, it goes up there. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. You've been playing the confusion ending for... Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the time return stopped? Does that mean... Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... All right, guys, I'm going to leave the game there. Um, there's probably a lot of endings which I didn't discover. So I'm back here at the like the museum, uh, which showcases the choices that the developer had to make in making this game. Um, I'm not 100% sure about what this game was about. I don't know whether it's about the, the choices that the developer has to make in making a game in the first place and uh, the possible bugs which I guess the gamer or the player may encounter um, so it's an interesting game a game about a game a choices game I don't know <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna wander around here and um, yeah have a little look and read all this stuff I think this stuff is really interesting um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed it guys thanks so much for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next game. Until then, take care.
bit holy, you know, you're 